Thank you. Good morning. Um, I'm Stefano Terna, uh, co-founder and the CTO of Tomorrow Data. In uh, Tomorrow Data, we develop a software tool for the Internet of Things, namely for programming the devices of the Internet of Things, so for the low-level part of uh, this enormous ensemble of technologies. And what we are going to talk today is something uh, uh, that is uh, um, in between uh, continuous delivery and uh, Internet of Things, passing through Python, Git, and a bit of our uh, tool, IOTLI. So let me start with uh, some examples. Maybe you know that on last uh, October the 21st, uh, a big part of the Internet went down for uh, some uh, industrial cameras that were infected for the first time, not by viruses, but by uh, and, uh, the, maybe you know the Mirai botnet. Um, and this is just one of the hundreds of uh, attacks to which uh, IoT devices may be exposed. Do you hear me? Maybe I have to speak like this. Uh, this is uh, the real scenario of how much of the internet went down that day. And you found, find a lot of interesting numbers of uh, maybe one 145,000 of different IPs were uh, producing uh, more than uh, 450,000 uh, requests per second to, to, the, to the Google Shield service when Google uh, tried to protect uh, the, the problem. What, what uh, Xiongmai Technologies is doing in these weeks uh, for this problem, the producer of the cameras, is to physically recalling uh, uh, at least the industrial uh, devices. They have uh, um, deployed on the field both uh, domestic uh, cameras and industrial cameras. For the domestic cameras, they just said to the customers uh, via email, this is the new firmware, please upgrade it. Uh, for the industrial cameras, of, of course, they couldn't, and they uh, recalled the product. This is mainly for the problem of the firmware upgrade to solve the, the issue. Um, let me introduce, uh, w w what does it mean to get involved in an Internet of Things project? Well, it means to get involved in all of these kind of steps with very different kind of competencies to be taken together in, within the project from uh, something on the, on the low part, the devices, the sensors, hardware, up to firmware development, connectivity, communication, management and provisioning both of devices and uh, we hope of the software on the devices, what is uh, the main topic of this talk up to the end user functions and just a, a little bit of business uh, up, until you are arrived here your customer haven't seen anything of your project yet and the balance of the cost among this huge part and this uh, is very important to to be controlled uh, what happens in this first five years of expansion of the Internet of Things is that uh, the, the main technological offerings mostly focused on the collection of the huge amount of data generated and uh, something on the, uh, let's say, cloud intelligence to be applied on data, so that analysis or uh, triggering of rules, but on the cloud. Uh, somehow it has been forgotten uh, the security. This is just an example of bad security. This was exactly the problem of the Xiongmai uh, cameras. But uh, where we are mainly concerned with this uh, talk is uh, this point. Uh, the fact that uh, an important part of the security can be, um, can be provided if you have uh, a standard and uh, robust way to upgrade the firmware especially when devices are installed in uh, hard to reach places so in industrial iot this is um, quite important because maybe you don't want to go there within the device near the device uh, twice because otherwise your project will uh, will go out of budget so we need something like continuous delivery this is nothing but uh, standard uh, drawing of continuous delivery so a cycle of uh, just let me recall it um, you you all know it but uh, a cycle of um, building, deploying, testing, releasing. What are the points uh, that make this difficult in the IoT? So this is not, uh, this is, these are uh, by David Rosen. Uh, the first one is the enormous amount of legacy. So you do not have standard hardware out, uh, out there. The second point is uh, that uh, 
mainly firmware is uh, developed in C, and you have a, log, a, a huge um, need of uh, b building uh, power on the somewhere. So it takes a lot of time to, to make the builds. Um, test automation is, is is very difficult to compare. This is in comparison to what, what we think about uh, continuous delivery in, uh, in in the cloud and, and server uh, uh, settlement. And uh, last but not least, the regulatory requirements, which uh, maybe if you attach some device near an industrial machine, you have to to be compliant with a lot of regulations different from country to country. So starting with some proposal of solution, the first one is uh, developing some sort of uh, hardware abstraction layer. This is difficult. This is where uh, in universities and academics uh, are working. In uh, Turin, we, we are working together with Politecnico di Torino. But uh, there is another good news, that the Raspberry Pi, exactly it, uh, somehow exited its role of maker development platform entering, especially in, uh, in, in Europe, in Germany, and in the north, uh, northern uh, countries, uh, the getting a grade of industrial uh, hardware, uh, also gr thanks to some uh, companies which are producing uh, industrial versions, uh, certified industrial version of the Raspberry Pis. This is important because there are 12 million of uh, Raspberry Pis deployed, not only, of course, in the industry, but and uh, this is important because it generates some sort of standard of the hardware. We can write uh, firmware in Python, and this is uh, the main point, uh, just to let you know, of our uh, IOTLI platform. You can provision once and develop remotely, and we will go back to this point uh, later on. So this means that uh, once... Uh, once you have the, 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 the right hardware, you install it and then you program. Uh, not, you do not need to be there to program. And for the regulatory requirements, maybe we need a standard sandbox so that the, sta the sandbox is certified and it protects with some certified solutions. The, let's call it the user code that runs within the device. And because of the fact that the, the sandbox is certified, this propagates the certification up to the to the user code, uh, provided that uh, the sandbox is uh, cons uh, constraining uh, the execution. There are other <laughs> difficulties, or maybe differences, among continuous delivery in the IoT and in uh, uh, IT standard infrastructure, connection and reliability. Um, you do not want functions in industrial IoT to run uh, on the cloud because if the connection is lacking, you do, cannot trigger uh, feedback actions on uh, on the industrial machines. Um, distributed devices cannot be mapped to a big data center because in a data center, a cluster of server is cooperating to the same goal. In, in, uh, in the IoT settlement, uh, different IoT devices also with the same firmware and, and for the same purpose and for the same functions uh, are uh, behaving uh, completely independently with, with one another. Maybe this is uh, the, what, what happens most often. Um, there are cases in which the devices cooperate, but th th this makes things uh, even harder. Uh, and the last thing that is that you cannot mock the word. So you, you can make uh, um, hypotheses uh, in the lab and during the development time. You can uh, maybe you, you, you expect the temperature to have some trend from sensor and you mock uh, some temperature trend uh, with some uh, whatever you want to mock your, your, your API calls. But uh, then on the, um, on the real field, maybe the temperature is different, your rules are behaving different. So of course, the temperature is, a, is, an, is an easy example. The point is not that uh, some cloud rules are not triggering the right way. The point is that your code within the device uh, is behaving uh, in, the, in the wrong way with respect to unpredictable uh, field condition. So here we need edge logic. Here we need some sort of grouping the devices and uh, uh, getting help from Git to make the devices cooperate at least at the firmware deployment side. And here again, we need to program remotely so that you can ask your customer to give you a machine, a real machine, attach your device and test the firmware of the device straightly attached to the, to the real machine. So this is uh, what we uh, are uh, approaching. 
both in the talk and uh, really in our development. So we we think of uh, a way to couple together br Git branches and devices. This is uh, the big picture, then we will go in detail. So imagine that you have devices uh, that live on some uh, development branch, so that when you push on the, that branch, you are upgrading the devices, and then you can do all sorts of uh, interesting things that you already do with Git. But thinking that when you make continuous delivery, you, you are deploying firmware on the devices. So we have these uh, building blocks. We have Python, and let me also recall about MicroPython, which is uh, uh, not uh, what we use within the Raspberry Pi, but MicroPython is very important for microcontrollers. It can run Python code in a restricted, uh, with restricted stand standard library in Cortex-M0 and Cortex-M3. Um, we have our uh, IOTLI tool, we have Git, and we have the Raspberry Pi. So, so putting together these uh, building blocks, we try to build some continuous delivery for the Internet of Things. Just two words about uh, IOTLI, maybe because uh, it is uh, important to understand uh, the, the following. IOTLI is mainly built, uh, maybe you have understood, uh, of two parts, uh, a sandbox, which is installed on the device, and a cloud-based programming tool. The sandbox, which is important, is this one. So we have the Raspberry Pi, we have the Raspbian, we have Python, and we have the IOTLI sandbox, which performs mainly three, uh, three actions. Uh, the first one is uh, uh, it manages the synchronization of the firmware whenever it is required to upgrade it. The second one is the coupling, the execution of the user code from the communication and the uh, firmware upgrading part, so that if the user code breaks, the communication and upgrading uh, parts uh, are still running and you are always able to upgrade the device in case of, uh, of bugs. And, uh, and you are able to debug your code. In fact, you can, uh, we, can, we trap exceptions and we throw them uh, through a, an online IoT board so that you are able to do live coding on a device remotely. This is the cloud programming tool. We will uh, have a, a real look at it in a minute. And uh, so this is how we set up uh, IOTLI Git integration for the Internet of Things. We have the, um, the coding. We have this concept, which is necessary in the Internet of Things, of deployment groups. Deployment groups are, are groups of devices with a certain level of importance, let's say. So you, we, you can have development deployment groups in which uh, you just ship the code without thinking too much about what you're shipping. And then you have critical deployment groups. The, import, the interesting part is that critical deployment groups are binded with Git branches while uh, development deployment group are just like your working uh, working area in uh, in git uh, but when at certain time you are glad with your code you commit it to a certain branch and then this can be shipped via git push to uh, maybe critical can be staging so attached to real machines but uh, not definitely critical or real production so now it is demo time, and uh, just to introduce the demo, maybe you cannot uh, look, uh, see this, uh, this. Here there is a very small motor that I hope will rotate. If we, if it, uh, if we want, uh, I will say you that it is rotating because it, you, you cannot see it. And um, so this is uh, an industrial scenario where we have uh, some uh, industries with the uh, Raspberry Pis installed to control some machines. In this case, this is a conveyor belt machine. Maybe you want to mm, switch it on, off, um, automate uh, some operation of the machine, and you have attached uh, a Raspberry Pi. Industries are doing such things. I mean, it is not uh, something I'm using to put a Raspberry Pi within the industry. Um, but at a certain time, when you are, have already deployed the solution and the firmware of the solution, you, the, the customer uh, learned that there is something new, maybe the, something that is not new for him. The, the, the machine is experiencing some vibrations and is getting uh, something wrong, but uh, 
now the customer knows that you can uh, provide him with new code within the device uh, to detect this, uh, let's say, anomaly and uh, perform some security action like uh, stopping the motor. So this is uh, hopefully w what we will try to do in the demo. Uh, oh, sorry, but now I have to put the microphone. Here you have the devices connected, the deployment groups, as I said. I we will skip this one. Here you have the, co the code. Oh, I have to. This is uh, Python, organized in this way. So these are handlers, which are called whenever a new message, JSON message comes within the device. This is the standard IoT loop function. You can have more than one in the Raspberry Pi since, since uh, the, the sandbox is multiprocessing. And here you have the debugging console where you can just send messages to test the code that you're writing here. So just to start with a little example here, we are testing communication to go with this, in fact, it, in fact okay. So we sent this uh, echo message and the, the board uh, uh, ping it back to us, so now we can try to start the motor in some direction. And uh, it won't start. Ah, no, because I'm in Hamburg, okay. every time I have to do this switch, because we have just one motor in the environment. Okay, so the, the, this is the point. Now, let's say that yeah, how is the time? No, the um, ah, mine. Okay. Uh, so let's say now that uh, uh, you want to detect some vibrations via this accelerometer to stop the motor. We can do this uh, in two way. The first one is we or we we implement the function here. This very simple function. You deploy the code uh, needed to speak with the uh, I2C uh, serial for the, with accelerometer. You pull the accelerometer with some frequency. In this case, this is the frequency. This is the period. And then uh, you set up a rule, which is on the device, not on the cloud. Very simple in this case, but you can import uh, whatever uh, uh, also mathematical library to, the, to, to perform anomaly detection. And let me... Uh, tell you that maybe you know uh, Google released the, the, the TensorFlow version for the um, inference part of machine learning to be run on the Raspberry Pis, not the training part of course. Um, now we have this, uh, this code that I just come to comment it okay uh, we we commit it because this is production now that we have made the commit we can choose the production deployment group Oof. And hopefully, it. In fact, it is not working. Okay, this is the demo time. So um, the the. I know. Okay, it worked. Okay, the LED switched from LED to right, from red to green, and um, now the, let me. Notice to you that the motor is still running, so the the software part is not interacting with the machine part. Uh, this is very important in the industrial scenario. One of the first things that the cust an industrial customer is worried about these uh, strange uh, things attached to his machinery is that they not interact with the mechanical functioning. But now the, um, the 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 firmware is in place to detect the anomaly, and if they, I move the motor, some. Uh, here you can see that some uh, anomaly is detected. Anomaly detected, and if I try to start the motor again, 
The motor does not start because, the, I mean, we, we, we just implemented a, a very simple state machine. You have to, to resolve the, the anomaly, and then you can start the motor again. Um, so, last thing, okay, we are in time. Last thing is that now we will try to do the exact same thing from the command line using standard Git tools. is even more complicated for me from here. So first of all, we clone the repository with the code that uh, you saw before, that is uh, up to now. We are in the development stage of this function, so I mean, at the end of the story, you won't have, the, you, you won't have to, to clone uh, those, that number. You have the project name, hopefully. OK, this is the, the project. Uh, Tell me if I'm making something wrong. Okay, you can recognize the same, the exact same uh, organization of, of directories. Now, what we try to do here is to enter. Uh, okay, first of all. Okay, you can see here the the commit that we made uh, on the uh, on the um, uh, IDE, and you can also see that head is aligned with both the IDE. We have a a branch specified for the, uh, writing the code from uh, from the cloud environment, and the production branch where we ship the code. And um, now. just go back I and mean, this is not a great uh, functionality but Hopefully now, in fact, you see that the, the firmware switched back to the old version thanks to the pushing of the code uh, via Git. So you can interact both from 
the web uh, console. Web console for, for fast prototyping, maybe it is not for a, a very complicated project, even if uh, it, it can give you some uh, interesting features like code generation of standard functions. And uh, to recap, we, we are at the end. Perfect in time. So the point is that uh, there is a lot of uh, work to do uh, uh, still. Mm, we think that this is the right uh, direction. There are uh, also other mm, directions uh, we, in the simulation uh, world. So you simulate uh, devices, but uh, you have all the problem that, that of the fact that you cannot mock the world in that way. Uh, Okay, this is just to say that we are part of uh, VUCAP uh, Telecom Accelerator and the uh, Università di Torino Accelerator. We will launch IOTLI uh, in May 9, so if you want to subscribe for early adoption of it, uh, you are welcome. We are uh, testing it. Not all uh, the pushing functions will be available uh, for that date, but uh, we will really appreciate any kind of collaboration. And let me also mention that IOTLI is open source on GitHub, both uh, the sandbox and the, and the backend part. Of course, there is uh, some work to, to do to deploy it. But and, uh, and OK, we are done. Thank you. We have a couple more minutes uh, if you have any questions for Stefano. No? Thank you for, uh, for this inter interesting talk. Uh, just a question about uh, what, uh, uh, how do you deal if uh, some, something with went wrong with uh, with a deploy of firmware so is there uh, any fallback mechanism for uh, for recover uh, recover yes so the first point is that uh, there are uh, hashing mechanisms to check uh, the genuinity of what is going to the uh, we set up a, a protocol and you can see it uh, on github um, the second point is uh, maybe if the problem is not uh, for the corruption of the of the binaries, but uh, the network and reliability. So mm, uh, that device cannot be upgraded when you make git push, for example. And uh, we use MQTT protocol uh, behind, and MQTT has something called the uh, uh, quality of service two. So it keeps retrying. Uh, up to up to when the messages are, are delivered, the the MQTT protocol manages this at uh, the. You see it as a protocol level, but it is an, at an, at the application level. The third point is that uh, we the sandbox really protect the code. So if you write bugs in the code, uh, you can continue debugging it. So th these are three different points of protection of what can happen in nasty situation. I don't know if I Yes, uh, I mean, the, the sandbox is there exactly for that purpose. Uh, we are working, uh, we, we have some years of, uh, some 10 years of, of, of experience of, of, on firmware programming, not me personally, but our engineers in firmware. And, um, and of course, I cannot, I mean, we, we are testing it, we are testing in quite complicated scenarios, and I mean, it, is, uh, it seems to be robust. But, I mean, what, what, one of the values that, let's say we are trying to, to sell and to develop is exactly the robustness of the, of the sandbox. We're done. Thank you very much.